Welcome back to Let's Play Neverwinter Nights 2 Mysteries of Westgate. This is Big Los, and we are in the Market Triangle. We're about to go into this tower right here just to see what's inside. Then we'll hop off to the Arena District. And maybe we'll check out this place too. How do you pronounce that? Mentis. Mentassin's Mysteries? So let's go up in here. Now, one of my viewers pointed out to me that I won't be able to get the full benefits of this build because this is a really short game, and it'll probably be over before we get past level 14. So, I was thinking about modifying the build a little bit. So, I'm going to have to take two more levels of Rogue to get my base attack bonus to 6, which is a prerequisite for the Arcane Archer, because I do want to get as many arcane archer levels as possible, but it's looking like I'm only going to be able to take probably four, maybe five at the most. Which means that I'm going to get the imbue arrow feet, which is probably going to be the, the main reason for taking it. That's at the second arcane archer level. And then I'll get one secret arrow. Also, I have learned that the... Well, when you level up your character, you can actually save five of your skill points for a future level. And that's why at level two, when I took the wizard level, it had no skill points allocated anywhere. Because you're supposed to save them up for the third level, and that's why the third level had 14 skill points to work with instead of just 10. See, you learn something new every day. Thanks a lot for your help, by the way. Alright, so let's talk to some of these people in here. Welcome to you. Hmm, I can't imagine what you and I would have to talk about. Oh, you got seven gold. I greet you. And you say the same thing. Are you out of money? You are. Hey there. I don't know, and I don't care. Does that answer your question? Hello. Leave me alone, I have work to do. It doesn't look like we can get to these people. No. Looks like a locked door. What is this place? Is this like a counting house? Clerk. Westgate's wheels don't come to a halt just because some adventurer demands attention. The Market Triangle has almost as many lowlifes as the Harbor Loop. However, at least these lowlifes have money to spend. Ha <laughs> ha! But apparently they don't have money to take. Hello. And you don't have anything either. Well, let's see what's behind the open door first. Anything in here? No, it doesn't even say what this place is. Let's see if we can unlock some of these doors. I bet you they'll say a specific key is required. Yep. This one too? Alright, well, it doesn't seem like there is anything that we could be doing in here, so... We'll just have to come back later. It doesn't even say what the purpose of this place is. Oh, well, maybe we can ask around or something like that. Oh, yeah, why don't we go check to see if that fire is still burning? Do I have a ray of frost? I do. Maybe I'll try to use that on the fire if it's still going. Yeah, it is still going over here. Let's try Ray of Frost on it. If that doesn't work, then we'll just have to come back when it's burned itself out. If that even happens. Dabra.
No, that didn't put out the fire. All right. Well, we'll go see that last shop that's in here. Oh, wait a minute. We can go check over here. There might be something that's not shown on the map. Maybe there are more statues around here. Telescope. And what is this place? That's not on the map either. So we'll go up inside. See if there's anything. Halt there, madam. I'll just need to check you for contraband substances. What substances are contraband? Potions of speed and anything that might be able to be used to either hasten or slow down animals. I think I do have a potion of speed. Come to think of it, we might need to keep a close eye on you too. Don't start casting any spells once the race starts or you'll be visited. That's not meant to be a threat, just a word to the wise. There's a lot of money flowing around this particular race, you see. And the boss might lose his reputation if anything suspicious occurred. Why is all this necessary? Because of the big race, of course. The boss doesn't let in anything that might be able to be used to fix the results. Okay, go ahead and check. A potion of speed? I'm sorry, but I'm going to need to confiscate this until the race is over. I'll give you a ticket which you can redeem at the end of the race to get your potions back. How about you'll take nothing? Nah, let's just play along for right now. Very well, take them. Very good, madam. And here's your redemption ticket. Put it someplace safe. Now, let's see what else you've got. Okay, she's clean. Enjoy the races. Oh, and if you leave, you'll have to be rechecked at entry. But as long as you stay in here, you're fine. So he took my potion of speed. So this is a racetrack, huh? Maybe I can do sleight of hand and get it back. Oh, I got 21 gold pieces from this guy. Greetings, Move along and don't even think about cheating. I got one gold piece. I think he is pretty much empty. Let's try one more. He has nothing. Hello. Okay, this is how we can get our potion back. Nothing, please excuse me. And we can't steal it back, unfortunately. So I guess we can make some money by betting here. Grunt and a door. What do you have to say? He's a long day. Grunt's as solid as a brick and about as smart. Sorry, we're not taking bets just yet. Why is that? There's a big race between the house champion Big Bruiser and the challenger Dale and Down soon. Oh, and, and the challenger Dale and Down soon. I'm still working out the odds. Come back a little later if you want to make a bet. And you're too far away to slide a hand. Okay. What about this guy? Grunt. Hello? Uh, Google. You go, no one back. Go away. Okay, I got eight gold. I've got a good feeling about this next race. You don't have anything. The ale is much better. The ale here is much better than that swill down at the black eye. Hello there. Hey, out of my way. I'm trying to watch the races. Would you like something? Okay, I got seven gold. Would you like something? I don't think I can get to that guy without those other two moving. Would you like something? Hey, out of my way. I'm trying to watch the races. He's a 
long day. I could use a drink. Oh, I wonder what's in the back here. Brom? Is a long day. Did you hear the explosion earlier? Apparently a house just burst into flames. Yes, I did. I greet you. Hello there. No, I don't believe anybody has stuff here. What can I get for you? I'd like to see your selection of drinks, if I may. Oh, we got something new here. Maelstrom's Punch. It's a house specialty of the track, for it is the normal house brew en enchanted lightly by the house sorcerer so that the imbiber senses are especially heightened. Suleiman Sublime. Specialty of a local wine brewer. It is thick and pungy, but goes down easily, giving the imbiber the sensation of flight. And Sembian Swill, probably the most expensive thing here. It's a dark and bitter drink made from the fervid root and designed to fail a grown horse with a single swig. Okay. I'll have to keep that in mind. Maybe we'll have to give it to a horse to get him out of the race or something. If they even race horses here, this kind of looks small. What do they race, like dogs or rats or something? Let's see what this guy has to say. Hello. Normally, I like a good chin wag, but can you... Let me finish my dinner first. Come back later if you like, and perhaps bring some ale. Hello. Maybe we'll have to bring some ale to this guy. How much does that cost? Two gold? We could probably afford that. All right, let's go back in and see if we can... Oh, we got someone else here, Master Chef. Not to be confused with Master Chief. No. I guess... Oh, there we go. What are you doing talking to me? Can you, can you not see? I am busy. But I'd like to ask some questions. Oh, the things I do to suffer for my art. Does Volo have to go through this every time he writes an epic? Do any of the great masters? Oh, my beef. Oh, my broth. Oh, great muse. Do not desert me because of this insufferable wretch. <sighs> Are you still here? Go away. I tell you, go far away. Okay, I will. Hello. I wonder if there's a way we can use the ale on this guy. No. We could probably put it on the floor. Can't put it on the table, though. Alright, we'll just hold on to it. We might need it. I think in this game, if you drink, your stats go down, like your intelligence. And I think your dexterity goes down, too. Hello. I like my potions back. Here's my redemption ticket. If you redeem the coupon, you'll have to leave. Very well. Maybe the significance of this place will become more clear later. All right, let's check out this telescope signpost. This old weather-beaten sign placed here by a group calling itself the Westgate Archaeological Guild points to the nearby lens and has a brief explanation called the Seven Hills. Read the expository text. At the height of the Campion Dynasty in the year of the Red Rain, 
927 Dale Reckoning, the council issued the Temple Ban Edict in response to the great excesses of the Prince Templars and the Reaver King, forcing the active religious houses to move outside the city. Calling the ban, the seven greatest temples, those of Moander, Garagos, Gonador, Jurgle, Savras, Sylvanus, and a final now forgotten deity, established, established seven shrines atop the seven hills to the immediate west of the city. The temple ban edict was reversed in the year of the Draco Rage. 1018 Dale Reckoning, allowing the temples to move back into the city. Since then, the seven shrines have remained unused. Since 1354 Dale Reckoning, the Westgate Archaeological Guild has petitioned the council annually for permission to conduct excavations of the hills. These sites have seen religious rites performed since before the city existed, perhaps even as far back as when the region was only a distant outpost of the ancient Jamdath Empire. As such, the proposed excavations are of great historical and academic significance. To date, the Council has rejected these petitions, citing the need to both respect the religious rites performed there and also to maintain the memory of the past. Well, maybe we'll just sneak in there. Check out the telescope. The lens of this device is locked in position such that it permanently points to the west. There is a small box built into the base with a slot cut in the top. The words five gold pieces are written above the slot. Look through the lens. The lens remains dark. Great. This is like those telescopes they have at tourist places like Twin Peaks or Niagara Falls. Yeah, let's insert five gold pieces. The gold pieces vanish as you place them near the slot. As the fifth one disappears, the lens lights up. So yeah, we're gonna look through. The lens is pointed so that seven hills can be seen beyond the great western walls of the city. On each of which is positioned a circle of standing monolithic stones. On the nearest hill, the circle consists of eight blood red stones you guess to be about three times the height of a human all curving inwards like massive fangs. The circle on the hill just to the right and a bit behind the first consists of 10 to 12 stones entwined in vines and position under a half dozen massive trees draped with sinewy moss. The next four circles are a bit obscured by the first two though you can catch glimpses of great marble stones on one and odd blue structures that almost look like gems on another. On the final hill, set a bit apart from the first six, lies the final circle, consisting of seven massive monoliths of the deepest black. The entire hill is shrouded in a cloak of shadows, an odd fact considering it is treeless and otherwise exposed to the sky. That is kind of weird. Alright, let's check over here. Probably that shop. Whoa. Stupid bugs. Alright, we'll go in and see if we can buy anything. If we can afford anything, that is. The Stone Tree of Rethild. This strange stone object was removed from some ruins deep in the depths of Rethild, a great swamp located on the western edge of Halrua's Wall. It resembles a tree of sorts, with sinister, spine-like stone protrusions and a certain, an essential tentacle-like trunk. Just wish this wasn't so hard to read. The stone is extremely warm to the touch, surprisingly so. Whether or not it possesses any magical properties, you have no idea. Anything else around here? Uh, Chilton Throttler. So that's from the jungles of Chult, huh? Soldier in stunning self-shining armor. What is this thing? 
This set of animated armor is shiny beyond compare, no doubt because it routinely polishes itself with the dry rag it has clutched in its right gauntlet. And I don't think we can do sleight of hand on it. This set of animated armor is shiny beyond compare, no doubt because it routinely polishes itself. Yeah, we got that. Soldrian's stunning self-shining armor was commissioned by Duke Soldrian of Baldur's Gate in 1244 Dale Reckoning. Ambitious and more than a little vain, Soldrian insisted on projecting a glorious image whenever he appeared in public. To that end, he sought a set of armor that was every bit as grand as that of the city's founder, the legendary hero Baldurun. Soldrian spared no expense in the armor's construction, even paying for a costly enchantment. Following Soldrian's instructions, a wizard artisan cast a spell that permanently animated the armor, much like solitary wizards animate armor to scare off intruders and perform routine tasks. This armor had but one task, to polish itself whenever it became scuffed or sullied. The wizard assured Soldrian that animating the armor in this way would not interfere with it being worn whenever the Duke wished to show it off. And the Duke did show it off at every opportunity. Though Soldrian had only a minor role in the Flaming Fist mercenary campaign, he managed to insert himself into every public ceremony in the city, always wearing his shiny armor. Unfortunately, this led him to, to becoming a laughingstock in certain quarters where sniggering critics noted the discrepancy between the illustriousness of the armor and that of the man who wore it. When the bread riots of 1249 Dale Reckoning broke out, Soldrian saw an opportunity to prove his critics wrong. Donning his splendid armor and wielding his newly forged magical hammer, he led a contingent of flaming fist mercenaries against a throng of rioters. Soldrian's charge is a came to be known was a success at first. At least a third of the mob dispersed immediately upon laying eyes on the stunning figure of Soldrian sitting atop an enormous, and it must be said expensive, gray stallion. Fortunately, just when it looked like Soldrian would have his moment of glory, he was struck with a projectile from the crowd. The exact nature of the projectile is a matter of debate, and it's a debate that has played out crude festal jokes and raunchy bard songs ever since. For the purposes of the story, all that's really needed is to point out that the projectile was unclean and that when it struck, disaster struck with it. <laughs> it started to clean itself during the battle. Sullied as it had never been sullied before, Soldrian's armor immediately seized a nearby banner and began frantically polishing itself against the will of its wearer. <laughs> Unable to control his movement, Soldrian was soon unhorsed, and his mercenaries, confused by the spasmodic movements of their leader, were sent fleeing. Soldrian quickly found himself alone and at the mercy of the mob, an unfortunate situation indeed, for mobs are not known for their mercy. When Soldrian's body was found the next day, many were surprised to find that his magnificent armor had not been taken. It's speculated that looters were scared off by the belief that Soldrian could not be killed. No matter how many deadly blows they gave him, he just kept cleaning his armor. <laughs> Maybe we should talk to somebody first in here. Hmm. I welcome my friend to the shop of Mintassin the Magnificent. That's, uh, that's me. I am Mintassin. The Magnificent. Is there something wrong? You seem preoccupied. Excuse me? Ah, well, you, you see, I've recently returned from a planar jaunt, and the effects of the travel have left me a little woozy, shall we say. My apologies. Alright, I'd like to see your wares. Superb! Here, take a look. Ooh. What a... What a fine selection you have. Anti-magic cloak. Spell resistance 12, and it can do global invulnerability. It's a hardiness. 
yeah, we're definitely going to be shopping at this guy once we get some money. Displace your beast hide. Is this a cloak? It is. You can use displacement. Jack's folly, a large person. Golem Slayer. Uh, it's just some Warhammer. Now you're talking. We got spells here. Okay, this is a cantrip. So we're looking for level 1 spells. Now those are level 2. So what would be the price range for level 1? 23 gold? Okay. Charm person. We'll buy it and scribe it. Let's see, I don't think we have color spray. What else can we buy here? Endure elements. Yeah, a large person. Yeah, we already have all the cantrips. We didn't get grease, did we? No, but we can get it now. Identify. Anything else? Low light vision? I already have this though. Might as well. Let's see, I guess magic missile. That's level two. And then we got a bunch of potions. Protection from alignment. What about these? That's level two. That is a cantrip. So why is it so expensive? Shocking grasp. I don't think we have this one. No. Yeah, we got sleep. Summon creature will take that. That's level two. Okay, I think most of the things that are 69 and above are level two, except for True Strike, but we already have that one, so we don't have to spend that much money on it. Okay. Oh, we got some more books here. Lesser Magic Bag. I might buy that if I had the money. Okay, we got a bunch of rings here. Rods and some wands. I definitely can use all of these wands. Alright, that'll be it for right now. And we are kind of getting up on time, so maybe we can take a look at some of these other things around here before we, the, we end the episode. So, we have some workbenches for crafting. The pedestal of Jonder the Valiant. Are all these going to have like a really long description let me see I'll just I'll leave these up for like maybe two or three seconds for each page and you can just pause it if you want to read it yeah there's like a whole bunch of text here to read Uh, Gavarik's Anvil. It's brittle and blackened. It bears a tremendous 
rift light crack through its center. Let's see. I'm going to just scan this and see if there's anything interesting here. Red Wolf of Payet. Oh, we don't even have to walk over there. Definitely a curio's shop. I wonder who actually wrote all this stuff for this game. It seems like there's like a lot of backstory and some of it is just not even useful. Alright, then we got this plant over here. Whoa. The vines emerge from its soil and begin to flail about. It's one of the many dangerous varieties of plants found in the great jungle of Chultz. Yeah, I don't remember seeing anything like that. While the plant does indeed throttle prey with its vines, victims are equally likely to die of suffocation after becoming hopelessly entangled and dragged below ground. Fortunately, the size of its enclosure doesn't permit this particular Chilton throttle throttler to grow to a dangerous size. Still, it would be unwise to let your guard down while standing anywhere close. Yeah, we got a couple more boxes over here. The game set of Mujibar the Foolish. Looks like a deck of playing cards. There are far more cards here than you would expect to see in a normal playing deck. Two dice slide nearby. was simple. A deck of 90 cards was produced. With the numbers 1 through 9 on 10 cards each. Each participant would roll a pair of dice and draw the number of cards indicated from the top of the deck. The one with the lowest total sum would win. It doesn't sound like a very fun game. Okay, so looks like a rogue was playing a great con and he was accused of stacking the deck. Oh, we got another area in the back here. The armoire of Queen Serena of Mulhalrand. Why is it so small? Man, there's a lot of information here.
Jeez, we got like two more things to look at. Got this chest over here. Oh! There's nothing in here. And we got the ashes of Drazakitis. Purchased a powerful wand of disintegration in Waterdeep for a hefty sum of gold. The ashes were stolen because this person used the wand to disintegrate a dragon. Okay, so these are the the ashes of the dragon that was disintegrated. Very interesting. All right. All right, so we didn't really get much done today. We just kind of explored a little bit, and we're going to explore more in the next episode. But in the meantime, this is Big Lotus signing off. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. And Tango and Windia.